Yeah, what do you want for lunch? A burger. What kind of burger? Everything. Now, during this Restricted Movement Act, uh, you can go out to buy food, but you gotta take your precautions. Step one, you gotta wash your hands. Next step, you gotta cover your face from any potential airborne things like cough and sneezes. Okay, step three is just an extra precaution. You gotta stop yourself from touching your face. So, let's do this. Well, this is hard. Got you the mushroom one. It's even bigger or so? Oh, the same size. Wow. That will be in our stomachs. Okay, just for size comparison, this is an elephant and that's their burger. Elephant, burger, elephant, burger. Now we are about to start the mukbang. Uh, it's not gonna be ASMR, so we're gonna be talking. So what's happening right now is that we have the whole COVID-19 uh, 19 thing happening. Uh, and uh, Shaza is a nurse, so she has been at the hospital taking care of patients. You have patients coming in every day, and then, uh, well, to be honest, we're kind of going crazy sitting in the house. I'm isolated most of the time. She's not home, and I'm just sitting here alone, eating not much. But today, we, we went crazy, and then we just got these burgers, and then we just, just, we just like maxed out everything. So let's go through the menu. So with me, I have the Portobello Mushroom Burger and we add on everything that is on the list that, we, that can be added on the burger which would be American cheese, Swiss cheese, chicken strip, onion rings, beef patty, BBQ chicken, chicken tenders, chicken sausage, pineapple and chicken filet. All the chicken that you can imagine is in this burger. Yeah, and on my end, I got the Philly cheesesteak because I love cheesesteak. And then the exact same add-ons, American cheese, Swiss cheese, chicken strip, onion rings, beef patty, barbecue chicken, a piece of tender, chicken tenders, sausage, and pineapple. And um, let's, let's see how much, oh, and then we also got a chili cheese fries because what's life without some chili cheese fries? Now, when I was waiting for them to like finish the, the burger, they actually had a tough time packing everything because there's so much stuff in it. I don't know how to hold this anymore. It's like, it's so big. They had to use two pieces of wrapping wrappers to wrap up this burger. And I don't even know how to hold this. Look at that. Look how big that is. <laughs> is that as big as my face? <laughs> oh yeah, she deserves this, guys. She's been working so hard in the hospital. All right, and this is mine. This is the Philly cheese steak. So we have here the sausage, that's the chicken patty, that's the Philly cheese steak. <laughs> Three types of cheese. And we also have this chili cheese fries. It's the best thing that we can find and carve during your own day. Yeah, we've tried other chili cheese fries from other fast food places. I, I feel like these guys are the best. It tastes like potatoes. So what are we going to talk about? Well, that's not, he told me a story oh, about yeah. what happened in the hospital. Why don't you tell the people about it? So I just got off my night shift. Not really at night, it was about um, 5 a.m. in the morning. I was just about to like place my, um, to store my um, IV drip stands because we have those stands for our drips. So I was just about to keep those in the store. So the store was way back in our ward and our ward is just a very long ward you know it's, it's placed way back in at the ward i went there i went to the storeroom by my own and usually i would just go to the store by my own anyways because you know um never anything nothing ever nothing spooky has ever ever happened to me so i was not expecting anything <laughs> And then, until. until I was minding my own business and as I was about to store the drip stand and I was going out from the store suddenly there's this um, there's this um, SPO2 monitoring uh, that's what it's called to you know measure your oxygen so that machine 
uh, it was not plugged in and it's turned off and it's like very neatly stored in a shelf so suddenly that particular machine turned on by itself and then I was expecting something else to um, turn on by itself because you know I was storing the IV drips and maybe I could have I could have just like bumped onto any of the machines and accidentally turned them by itself okay so but this machine was neatly tucked inside a, uh, on a shelf away from me so suddenly it was turned on by itself and it went creepy it was like and I was like, what machine was that? I couldn't find which machine was turned on. And then I called my friend. I called my friend and she said, Kak Shita, tolong nak tengok ni. I don't know which machine yang, yang on. I takut I accidentally rosakkan any of the machines. So my friend went and then she was like, uh, looking for, checking for the machines. And, and then suddenly she said, eh, bukan machine ni lah. Lepas tu, I was like, which machine is this? And then it's like, eh, macam bunyi machine dekat tu je, dekat amari tu je. And then I checked the machine, and it was the portable SPO2 monitor yang turn on. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and to make this story more logic, <laughs> I don't know, more logic or more paranormal, um, last last two days um, there was a patient of mine a baby uh, passed away um, using that SPO2 monitoring on the baby so the baby passed away with the machine I think I don't know what's haunting the machine but uh, yeah we said that and then cepat cepat kita orang cakap Okay, jangan kacau nurse ya pagi-pagi kita orang nak buat kerja. <laughs> and that's it. We yeah, moved on and we moved on and do our work like as usual. Anything else happened that morning or that day? Also my husband. Eh, I told you later at night, right? Ah, uh, told me at night. Like right before you left for work at night, she told me the story. <laughs> then she left me alone in the house. Hmm. What about other hospital ghost stories? Have you ever experienced anything else other than that? Okay. Um, way before I got posted in Sungai Bu uh, sorry in Shalam, I was posted in Sungai Bulo. So when I was in Sungai Bulo, I was post I was posted in an NICU. So there was a night shift also. Okay, me and my friend were um, eating in a pantry during our break, and then suddenly there's a knock on the window, and the pantry was. Um, surrounded by windows, you know, and there was a knock in the window. Everybody heard it. Right. Like, like, and the window is like outside. The window is facing it, outside or facing. It's inside? facing outside. Yeah, it's on the fourth floor. So, um, it's not on the fourth floor. It's on the second floor, but the window is facing the parking lot. So. I think nobody's gonna be in the parking lot in the middle of the night knocking on windows, okay? So it's not on the second floor. Not on the second floor though. Um we heard the knock. Everybody else heard the knock. It's not just me. And then we were like, Eko dengar tak? Dengar? Dengar apa? Macam bunyi orang ketuk tingkap je. Oh uh lah, -uh, aku dengar juga lah. And then everybody else went out from the pantry and we just ate outside. <laughs> Do they like hanging out near pantries? I don't really like to eat in a pantry, but it feels more sanitary, more hygienic to eat in a pantry. It's more proper. Because if we eat in the counter, we don't know what kind of germs are. Kind of, yeah, mostly germs is there around the counter. How about um, efforts stories about furniture moving? Does that happen over there? Never happened to me. Not never that kind of poker guys. So far so good. Yeah, I've been working in for as a nurse for almost seven years. Uh, I don't have that many ghost stories. However, I asked just now about pantries, right? Because okay, there was one time at, at the office. <coughs> I was filming this podcast mm. where we brought in this like ghost hunter expert guy. 
to your pantry? <laughs> well, to, for the podcast, I talked about like ghosts, right? And why she's processed for investigating for ghosts and stuff like that, right? Or the gym, as we call it. And then for fun, after the shoot, we're just like, hey, why don't you just walk around the office and then let us know, you know, what areas, no keras ke apa ke, the hot zone. Yeah, area mana panas ke Yeah. Okay. So then he just started walking around the office. So the good news is, uh, everywhere that's, um, that people sit around is fine. Nothing there, right? Uh-huh. However, when he went to the pantry, he was like, hmm, okay, tempat ni ada benda. But ni ada macam, there's some kind of penjaga ke apa ke I don't know what he, I can't remember what he said But the place apparently had something like sitting and waiting there I asked him, what does it look like? You know, you you been nampak ke apa ke And he says, it, it's like looking like a, it's kind of like looking at a shadow or something Like you feel like a weight It's kind of like looking, he, he, he defined it like an infrared camera You can kind of see a shape or like an area that's kind of blurry or something like that that's what he said. However, he said that thank God that that thing is like benign. Like it's not. It tak kacau orang lah. That he just sat down and just watch people eat or whatever. But why is it there? I don't know. <laughs> it's not my building. We're on the nineteenth floor, by the way. And sometimes, uh, and then the producers talk, start talking about. Oh, sometimes when we shoot, we hear noises like uh, at night or whatever when uh, when there's no one in the office or whatever. <coughs> and then yeah, so that's one area. The next area is uh, Studio 2. So the two stu- uh, I, yeah, the two studios in the office. So one of the studios apparently is also a little bit haunted. See the one that way at the back. Yeah, the one way in the back. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. Do you feel some? Do you see something? Mm-hmm. That one feels very something lah. Like. Feel something. Because I went there. I didn't even go into inside the studio. I was just passing by because it it's right next to the pantry, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that room kind of looks. I know it's the other one. It's not the one that's in the pantry. Oh, it's the other one. Oh. Uh-huh. But but the pantry is definitely like something there. Mm. I went to the pantry also. It was like I feel like there is something um not to say dangerous, but it feels like there's something there. Um, if you have that instinct, if you have like um that instinct of people watching you but you don't know whether who is watching you yeah it feels like that mm. so that's what he said in studio 2 mm. and then he went to this one that lounge area in the office lounge area was generally okay except the the we have this one like a foosball machine mm. he said that there's possibly something like attached to the foosball machine mm. so old machine uh, oh, sorry, football game. I don't know, it's just one of those things that you twist your hands. I know, the football. Yeah, I don't know how long this has been around, but she said there's something like attached to it. <clears throat> and then he said, uh, next time you invite me over, I'll bring my camera, we'll just like station it there overnight and see if the pieces move on its own. However, one thing is going to happen, we're going to move soon to a, a, a new office. Now, that new office, lots of horror stories. So we might bring him back there. So talk to me about the burger, how is it? I'm just about at the third layer of the burger. The patty itself, I find quite nice. <clears throat> it has kind of a like a smoky taste to it. Honestly, the chicken patty is a bit too much for me. <laughs> like if the chicken patty was not there, have you eaten the sausage? It would be great. Sausage, oh, almost. This is the last yeah. bit. That's your sausage. Yeah, I've eaten it. You mean it's right here? No, I'm just kidding. So tell me about. How are you coping with working from home? Oh my god, working from home. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take it back. We left for Japan at the end of February for mm. holiday, 23rd to 29th. When we left, there wasn't much of a there was no issue, all this like pandemic stuff was not out yet, right? It's more under control, yeah. Yeah. But midway through our our Japan trip. No, that, not midway. Right after we went we come we got back we got back here, we it was the Pandemic. No, I mean like midway in our Japan trip, <coughs> they suddenly start shutting down like yeah, Disneyland yeah. and Studio Ghibli Museum. That was in Japan now. Yeah, that was in Japan. So luckily it was like towards the end already. And the only thing we missed out was Studio Ghibli Museum which we need to go back to Japan for. And then um, we came back. Actually on Friday I even asked my uh, my HR, is there any SOP to be quarantined or whatever. Mm. At that time she said no because the SOP was not out yet. Came back, arrived on Saturday morning. 
Then I went to work Monday morning, Monday morning the SOP emails came in. Uh, uh yeah, arrived in. You mean the memo? So, yeah. So that from there I knew that I had to be quarantined. Went to the doctor, came back, quarantined myself for two weeks. Two weeks is over, went back to work, one day of work, and then the news of the uh, restricted movement or the movement control order came out. So was at work for half a day, stayed home for two weeks, and went back to work for one day, they stayed home, and now we're still home. And then I've been home for like for like more than a week. And then right after that, uh, announcement for another two weeks of the of the MCO. So it's gonna be a whole month. Yeah. And then looking at the the, the uh, looking at the trajectory of the cases, it looks like it's, it's gonna not, be more than a month. It doesn't look like it's slowing down anytime soon, yeah. guys. So yeah, I'm going crazy. Um hi, I'm a pretty big extrovert how, how guy are you right going now. Crazy? How do you feel? Signs of cabin fever I picked in. So cabin fever is like uh, a couple of the signs are like irritability, um, uneasiness or restlessness. I feel that a lot. I may or may not have started talking to myself. Talking to the camera doesn't count. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have not started talking to myself. But yeah, just all these things are really kicking in. I'm extremely lethargic, like at odd times of the day. Okay, so uh, like odd times of the day, I feel so sleepy and I feel like falling asleep. When this whole like quarantine slash restricted movement thing started, right? How's the pineapple? Mm -hmm. Pineapple's good, right? The first, I think, the first week, I was really productive. I, I could push out my work quite fast. But the second week onwards, and now we're in our... We're in our fourth week, my god. But the second week kicked in, and then it's just it just started getting really heavy. Getting a lot more difficult to stay focused. A lot more difficult to... To kind of stay... Stay stay sane. It's getting tough, guys. I'm stuck here for another two weeks. At least when I was quarantined, I was quarantined with my wife. So I had more company. But there are times now that I'm just like at home. Man, I'm only halfway through. Not hardly halfway, halfway through. Doesn't look like half. Okay guys, so the memory card just cut. And um, I think we're gonna call it. It's a lot and we can't finish it. But we're not wasting it. We are uh, having it for dinner. And maybe breakfast tomorrow morning. <laughs> but uh, just, what's, what's, what do you think of the burger? Like what would you do? Now that you've tasted every, every add-on that they have in the burger, what would you do differently? Well. If the next time I'm gonna order this, I would definitely not order the filet and the chicken strip. Yeah. Yeah, and that's it. Everything else I would put on. Yeah. Or I would add on. Yeah, yeah. I feel like if you didn't have this, like I could have finished this guy right here. Mm. Okay, but see if you if you have a chicken burger, you can add on more chicken. It's fine. If you have a beef based burger, you add on more beef patties. It's fine. <laughs> but when you add both of them together. Just a little bit much. I finished the sausage. I still have the chicken filet and all that. You still have the chili cheese fries. Too. Yeah, but the chili cheese fries are really good. Yeah. Like if you guys want good chili cheese fries, like go buy at the Carl's Jr. Yeah, just go to Carl's Jr. and just give it a go. It's so good. If you end the video, hope you guys enjoyed our story time and how we're coping with the restricted movement thing here in Malaysia. Mm. We're gonna slowly continue eating this and have some more for dinner and maybe some more for breakfast. Thanks, guys, and uh, yeah, keep it real. Bye.